The success of D-Day could only be maintained with the landing of large numbers of troops and huge quantities of supplies to support the breakout from Normandy. It's not only landing the armour, it's landing ammunition to keep the army going, food and fuel. To do that, you need a major port. Well, the answer was to build a harbour on the French coastline. So Churchill issued the challenge. Piers for use on beaches. They must float up and down with the tide. The anchor problem must be mastered. Let me have the best solution worked out. Don't argue the matter. The difficulties will argue for themselves. My grandfather was Brigadier Bruce White, who was an eminent civil engineer, and he was given the task of leading the operation. And it was my father, Alan Beckett, who was handed the task for coming up with the piers and the anchoring system. Well, the scale of the mission was absolutely huge, and one of the problems was that the time frame was very short. There was actually only eight months to construct the whole thing. The end result was they came up with the Mulby Harbour. In fact, they came up with two harbours, was Mulby A, which was the American one, and Mulby B, the British one each of them the size of Dover Harbour. They were assembled and gathered together in pieces all around the south coast of England. One of the most remarkable things is the fact that it was kept secret. They, they had something like 750 firms building it. They all had drawings of the bit they were building, but they didn't have the whole story. I was a corporal in the Royal Engineers, and it was our job to identify stores on board ships and make sure that they got to the engineer store's base depot in Bayeux. We arrived in the early hours of D plus one, laid off during D-Day and watched the bombardment, of course. We didn't know what we were waiting for. Although when ships started to arrive there, then we knew, yes, this is some sort of harbor. The first bits that went over were the block ships, the gooseberries they were codenamed. These were old merchant ships that went over under their own steam and were sunk to make the breakwaters in shallow water. Following on that, the, the concrete breakwater units were towed over and then sunk. Then the floating roadways were brought in and the pierheads were put up on the beach. And then the tanks started rolling ashore. I don't think we did any puck of work until the harbour really got constructed. And as soon as the harbour was up and working, even in a limited way, then we were off onto the, onto the harbour. Unfortunately, after a few days, there was an unusually large summer storm, which caused some damage, particularly to the American harbour. There was wreckage all over the place. The beach was littered with everything, ships, cases, but ours was repairable, thank God. Their mulberry was much more exposed to the weather than ours was. The operation was a great success. Many people think that it was the most outstanding engineering achievement of the Second World War. My grandfather received a knighthood in recognition of his achievements. And my father has a monument to his memory at Aramanche, overlooking the remains of Mulberry B. Some of the elements were taken from there and dropped off around the coast of the UK for use as sea defences. And some of them are still visible today on the beach here at burnham on sea I think it was possibly one of the greatest engineering achievements of the war. I don't think, in fact, this may be pushing it a bit, but I don't think, in fact, we could have got the victory we did without Mulberry Harbour. 